What do molecules and traffic have in common? Doesn't seem like much, right? Well, the behavior of both can be thought of on a really basic level as a changing process. And these two very different processes can be described mathematically using one model called a Markov chain. Now, in the first case, what we'll describe is how the physical structure of a molecule can change. In the second, what we describe is how the location of a car in my city can change. Now, a mathematical model is just a simplified description of a real-world system or process, expressing it in mathematical language so that we can study and predict its behavior. God. Uh, a Markov chain is one type of model, and it's used when we have a system which transitions between states with different probabilities. Now, let me clarify that using these examples. So in the molecule setting, uh, we'll let our states represent the different possible structures of the molecule. And then a transition from one state to another corresponds to the molecule changing from one form to another. The probabilities of these changes can be calculated using data. So once I've set this up, I take this information and I arrange it in what's called a matrix. Now this is my mathematical language. This is what I do all of my calculations with. Using this matrix, I can calculate the long-term prevalence of each state in my system, so how often or how likely it is to show up. In the molecule setting, this tells me which structures of the molecule are most common, which is extremely valuable in drug design. Now let's move to the traffic setting. Here I'll let the states represent roads, and then a transition corresponds to driving or turning from one road onto another. Again, the probabilities can be calculated using data. So if, for example, 30% of people turn left from this road to that road, then with probability 0.3, I move from this state to that state. Again, I take this information, I put it in my matrix, calculate the long-term uh, probabilities of each, uh, sorry, calculate the long-term, God, okay, let's move on. <laughs> Right, you'll notice that I have this nice visual representation of my systems as a network. The important thing to note here is that not all transitions are possible. So just like in a game of, say, chess, I can't just move anywhere on the board. I'm restricted in what moves are allowed. My research on Markov chains is uh, centered on determining the influence of this network constraint and how it can influence the behavior of a system modeled by a Markov chain. Now, I asked at the beginning what these two very different systems had in common. And not only can they both be um, modeled by a Markov chain, but theoretically, they could both have the same network constraint. So by doing my research in the abstract mathematical setting, my results can have implications in many, many industries all at the same time, from drug design to transportation and everything in between. Thank you. <laughs>